First on BBC Radio Wales, the Dunvant Male Choir sang through two world wars and the flu pandemic of 1918. As the choir emerges from COVID-19 to finally celebrate its 125th anniversary, journalist Jude Rogers explores the enduring appeal of a very special choir. Welcome to Dunvant, a small village west of Swansea that I always used to remember as a child for driving through on the way to town. It hasn't changed much, the playground's still there, there's the full moon Cantonese and Ebenezer Chapel sitting proudly on the corner, as it has done for 150 years now. It was here in Ebenezer Chapel that I saw Dunvant Male Choir's first 125th anniversary concert in early 2020, and it was fantastic, celebratory, wonderful, the start of a year when many more celebrations were to be held, including one very important concert. But things didn't quite work out that way because of COVID-19. I'm Jude Rogers, a music journalist born in the nearby village of Lucha. The Dunvant Male Choir has been part of the landscape of my life since I was a girl. They're the longest continuous running choir in Wales, founded in 1895, when coal, steel and tin plate were firing our industrial energy. They sang through two world wars and the flu pandemic. They still mean so much to people today singing at Six Nations rugby matches, making hearts beat quicker within the first few bars of a hymn or an aria. Even in our busy lives, full of so many distractions, they move us. But why? Perhaps one of Dunvant's long-term choristers, Dewi Morgan, can tell me more about their importance to people, as well as their history. He's in the choir's after-practice drinking hole, their corrugated iron palace. So hello, Dewey. Hello, Jude. Here we are in the Dunvant Rugby Club, which is... Um, lounge, please. The lounge. The lounge. I'm sorry, I'm you sorry. Know. The lounge. Yeah. It's very posh. <laughs> so tell us about how you came to join the choir um, a few years ago now. Yeah. So I joined the choir in 1978. My first stage in then was at 1978 at <laughs> And wow. people, uh, from then, nothing to do with me, I will say, but it started a very successful uh, period of, of the choir. And, uh, well, it might have been you, Derry. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say that, but <laughs> d- d- during that period, the number of cups that we won, oh, and wow. I- I'm flicking through... So this, we're going through a big folder now of um, photographs of the choir, surrounded by silverware, <laughs> um, on stages... Um, Oh, you're Blue on Peter. Blue Peter in yeah. 1979. Yeah. Why did Blue Peter get you on that time of day? Was it because it was, you were doing well in concerts? Yes, I, I think so. Thought? And it was St David's Day. Ah, um, So it, it, it was a feature on of well, the choir there. There's a picture here and there's cups from Rumney I Steadford, Pontry Dvendiga I Steadford, the Miners I Steadford in Puth Call, um, Cardigan I Steadford, Royal National I Steadford, Different Clue 1980. So it, this must have taken a lot of commitment as well. I know, speaking to older choristers, as in people who've been there for a long time, she says, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Oof. A lot of Welsh men I know, they can be quite soft-hearted right. at times, but generally they don't talk about big emotional things. But we talk about a choir, and it does something. Is it um, the act of singing and how it joins you together, or is it shared history? What do you think it is? It's all of those things, really. Um, it's singing together. It's the amount of time that you put into the rehearsal and hearing it blossoming. And the feedback you get in just the looks of, of the audience faces, you know, is, is tremendous. Earlier, I mentioned the important concert Dunvant had been looking forward to in April 2020 in Swansea's huge Brangwyn Hall. It's now finally happening nearly two years late. This concert was always going to be special because one of their favourite guest singers was returning. He first sang with the choir as a teenager. A video of the concert, also in the Brangwyn, is rumoured to be in the choir's archives. He's now a sir, taking time away from Royal Opera House rehearsals to talk to me about the choir he loved so much that they sang at his wedding two years ago. This is Sir Bryn Tervel, remembering where it all began. 
I think uh, if memory serves me right, Jude, it was a concert in Dolice that I did with uh, the famous Welsh soprano Rebecca Evans. And it turns out that Dennis Rees, who was then the secretary of the Dunbar's Melvins Choir, who was most probably spying, he was on a mission to come and hear this North Wales lad. And then I was invited to be the soloist in one of the patrons' concerts, and, and that is straight into the first division. So I'm, that's the first time I met Hilary Evans. And after the concert, uh, we were immediately invited by Dennis and uh, by the choir itself to, to be a part of their tour in the middle 80s to Canada. And so therefore we jumped at that chance to be international opera singers at last. <laughs> so that was the first time that happened. Exactly. And um, these concerts were sold out and people were enjoying the, the, the male voices singing in unison and and singing Welsh repertoire. Uh, so, so therefore, Wales became alive on the stage and the culture was thriving and people were interested in what was happening in you as, as, as a youngster, as a soloist. We sang, if I remember, in Toronto in the Roy Thompson Hall, which I've sang many times in after that. But that first memory, it really whetted my appetite. And uh, I think that's the, the start of my wonderful connection with the Dunvant Male Voice Choir. Of course, I invited them to uh, Hannah and my wedding in Swansea as well. They sang Callan Lan, and it was just uh, incredible just to see that again, with a, with a thinking, of course, that I'm going to be back to sing in their wonderful concert, and what a celebration that will be. I thought that was quite wonderful. You know, you could pick anybody <laughs> from the world of music to sing at your wedding, but it was important to you to pick the Dunford Male Voice Choir. Hey, Jude, I don't think I could have chosen anybody else. Uh, and, and I wouldn't have wanted to either because what it meant to me as a student to be welcomed into their fold. And it's something that I've never forgotten. Dunvant are special to me. They're family. My dad, Glyn, and my baby brother, James, sing with them. My other brother, John, has been Dunvant's conductor and musical director for 15 years. It's been tough for him through COVID, running rehearsals online, watching choristers singing to a screen, seeing their friends' faces, but not hearing their voices. Of course, this big sister missed her brother too. Hiya, you know, you're right. I'm right. I'm right. Guys, guys. Going round to his house to ask him about the choir in recent years reminded me what they had been through. So at the start of the pandemic, you realised you couldn't sing together. You know, um, as the months of the pandemic rolled out, you know, you found that, that it was considered that singing was mm. dangerous, basically. Yeah. Um, and you're looking at these men you're very fond of you know yeah. on their own in their houses um you know did you worry about them oh absolutely yeah, yeah yeah i've got the videos here on my mac from when we were doing zoom rehearsals when i was like note bashing things and one piece we revisited which you had done for years softly as i leave you and i've got on video there are three choruses in tears at home you know sta oh. staring into their monitor singing of course they're all muted and all I've got on my headphones is my own voice, you know, on the backing track. And I can see all their, you know, little thumbnails on the side. I'm just wiping tears from their eyes, you know. And obviously that elevated it because you've got the COVID aspect as well. So, yeah, it, it de there's definitely an element of that. It must have been in your head as well. You know, this is our 125th year. Yeah. We were meant to have this big concert with Bryn Terrible. Um, this choir is the longest continuous choir in Wales. So you didn't break up during world wars. No. You didn't break up during the Spanish flu. No. <laughs> you know, we've got been through one pandemic. Surely we can do it again. And it was very apt in many ways that, you know, that as if it on the 125th year, it's like, well, here's the ultimate challenge. Can you keep going through this, you know? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we, we really will, you know? <laughs> um, so it was a, a, a concern though, you know, and, and you looked at certain chorus and you think, oh, will we see them again? Will they be well enough to come back? But when we restarted, they were back with bells on, you know, ready and raring to go. In September 2021, 
18 months after they'd last sung together, they held their first full rehearsal, back where they began, in Ebenezer Chapel. Good evening, gents. Good evening. Welcome back. Close and all. Um, lovely to see all of us together, almost all of us. Of course, we're not a full compliment still. Some, I know some chaps are on holiday. Some are uh, understandably dependent on their own circumstances, a bit nervous to come back uh, just yet. So, as I say, this will all be in baby steps. Um, and we will take our time, uh, you know, as we, as we go through this term for certain. Right, Rachi. Let's try it. Uh, we'll have the four bars into the second verse, please. Hey? To me, it's home, it's emotion. I love hearing Welshmen doing something they rarely do in simple words, letting their souls sing. Thank you, gents. Thank you very much. Dunvant want to pass this on and keep the choir growing. A recent recruitment tactic has been to run flash mobs around Swansea. So I went along to one in Swansea Market with my son, mam, dad, brother, sister-in-law, niece, the whole gang. So it's Saturday morning and I'm here with my son. Say hello. Hi. And something special is going to happen today, isn't it? Yeah. And only we know what it is. Yeah. And your Uncle John is involved in it, isn't he? Yeah. And who else is involved in it that you know? The key. Are you excited? Yes. So I've found the conductor, who's Hello. wearing a lovely bobble hat. So where are you going to start? Well, I'm going to loiter by the lava bread. And then, <laughs> Very nice. And then start, um, once the dirty vegan has finished his demonstration, I, uh, I follow with Come Ronda, so... Oh, very nice. It's the first flash move we've done since the end of the pandemic, so... Aww. Do you get nervous? It just feels odd. You know, when you've got to, you know, start singing quite loudly near someone who's buying a tub of cockles. It's <laughs> a bit odd. You'd be all right. I faith. This is Effie. Effie has been in the choir. Guess how many years Effie's been in the choir? Go on. Do you won't mind what you say? 30. 30 more. Look how old they are. Tell him, Effie. 64 years this year. Only 64, 64 years. years. He must have started yeah. when he was one, mustn't he? I, well, I did start in short trousers. He wrote to those already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 18 now, mate. <laughs> I'm still one of the youngsters in the choir. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy that? Lovely, man. <laughs> Do you think you've you recruited anybody today? Well, yeah. It's been successful, you know. The recruitment campaign has been uh, successful there. Uh, People won't come and keep knocking the door, you know, you've got to go out. Yeah. You've got to reach out to them. And, uh, and there's chaps there now, they probably in their slippers most of the time because they can't go out. But give them a chance, you know. Because the people we have recruited are good. You know, they've settled in well, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and they've added to the choir. Yeah, okay. so, uh, so, yeah. No, it must be nice to be back singing here after, you know, after yeah. a long period of uncertainty. Yes, it's been... It's been Hugely disruptive, you know. Uh, mm. There's people we've lost them, you know. It's been a tough time, but now we're all back together. And there's a lust for it now, isn't it? You, oh, you don't want to do it. Oh, it's lovely. Uh, I just wanted to say hello. Hello. 
What's your name, sorry? Peter O'Sullivan. Oh, hello, Peter. How are yeah. you doing? My little Do you enjoy that? Oh, fantastic. What are you saying? Fantastic. Top ten. Uh, Top ten. Oh, yeah. you're uh, in demand then. Fraka, yeah, mate. Fraka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm Sheila, his wife. Hello, <laughs> Sheila. Nice yeah. to meet you. I saw you stand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been... Do you enjoy the Do you enjoy the choir? It's lovely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. How long have you been in it? Uh, Not Sheila, sorry. Sep- it's like a, that's Sep- Sheila. How long September... Have you been? 2019. It's difficult oh, right. to remember dates for the lockdown. So you're a new boy? Oh, yeah. And that was oh, yeah, only because I pushed him. We went out for a meal one evening, went back to the Brunswick for a drink afterwards. She sat down By next Alan to Kelly. the recruiting officer, <laughs> Alan Kelly. Yeah. But it, it, was, it was the leafleting that they did. So I said, right, it's at the bottom of the hill. There's no reason you can't just pop in. But then I joined and I, I meet people like Effie. Yeah, and you, can't them, you can suddenly you? get a, a sense of, of the continuation of the choir in the, oh, yeah. in the village. The biggest impact it's had on me is not the singing, the, the, which is amazing, mm. but it is that real sense that you've joined this train that goes right back to the late 19th century. Five years ago, yeah. It, 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 and you just think, wow. Yeah. And, it, and it's alive in the choir, isn't it? Oh, it's not much. something like we have to remember. No, no. It's there all the time, isn't it? It's, it, it's yeah. part of the fabric of it. Mm. You so know, you and, and, and when fact, that gets you, you think, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> and the fact that it's continued through COVID, it's amazing, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. every time I go in Ebenezer, I look at but the plaques, the memorial plaques, you know, and you think, it was there then, it was there then, it was there then, it was there. The continuation of a feeling. That's what the power of a male voice choir is about. Channeled up from the pit of the gut, vibrating through the heart and the mouth. I know that's how Dewey feels too. Just to bring it right down to base, I had a row from my wife, as one does, that's not unique, a um, month ago for the Brent Terrible concert. My grandson was having his confirmation and I said, well, you know, this has come up out of the blue, you know, the Brent Terrible concert has been on the cards for ages. I, you know, I can't go to the confirmation. I've got to go to the Denman concert. She said, you put, you know, the choir before your family. I said, no, I don't put the choir before my family. They're there. But I, I couldn't envisage not going to the concert. You know, it had been delayed, it had it in high expectation and, and really, really, really tuned up uh, musically and mentally for this the, this performance, you know. Bryn coming down and, and uh, gracing the event, it meant everything really, you know, t- to be there. So um, I, I said, my grandson will be my grandson. For for more than one day, and uh, I I can um, I can catch up with that easily enough, but I, I can't repeat a, a Bryn Terville concert mm. in the Brangwyn. Twenty one months late, the day of the concert finally arrived. Covid still hadn't gone. Four choristers tested positive in the week of the concert, but on the second of April, twenty twenty two, the show had to go on. So it's Saturday night and we're in the Brangwyn Hall. It's the night of the concert. It's quite weird because I used to come here as a teenager. Um, I was involved with the local youth choir and my mum played with the youth choir of West Lamb and um, it's like stepping back in time a bit. Quite strange to see so many people queuing up for a choir concert. And at seven o'clock everything will kick off. I'm going to have a little wander around, see what I can find. All right, Dad? Yes, fine. <laughs> Feeling fine. nervous? Yes. Apprehensive. Always before a concert of any description. Yeah. It's so important. Like, for us. Hi, well, it's still a Nice to see you. I'm just sneaking around in my recorder. <laughs> Trying yeah. to sneakily record my dad. How are you feeling? Yeah, fine. Yeah, You're always quite calm for a concert. We've only lost four corners. That's, it's just kicked off again this week, isn't it? Unfortunately. Well, you've been at home just kind of uh, isolating yeah. yourself from the world. <laughs> Parents are coming tonight. You know, oh, yeah. They haven't sung in their choir for two years. Really? They haven't. They haven't started oh. back. 
Zing Zay starts back this week. Right. And I've pulled them in here. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> how was rehearsal? Good? Yeah, good. They were all behaving themselves? Yeah, they look really smart and, and they listen to everything John said. <laughs> Did you see any of the videos that were unearthed? No, you found it. Found it. Well, they've yeah, done the VHS. Yeah, so um, I've got them on my phone. They're, um, I'll just pull that up now. Okay. I had a look when I sang in that first concert here. It was very serious. Ora Pranobis and... Yeah. Oh, you were a very serious this student, one. probably. <laughs> You've got Hear Me Winds and Waves. Hear Me Winds and Waves. God, yeah. A dicky Bird and the Owl. Can you play that? <laughs> You'll never go it right. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying that. It was so serious. <laughs> yeah. 37 years ago. Look at that mullet. Okay. <laughs> of its time. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, following what must be the longest concert interval in the history of musical concerts, we start this evening's not 125 years, but 127 years of the oldest continuously performing choir in Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dunvant Mail Choir. emotional night. The choir sang Pure Imagination from the Willy Wonka film, a song that played at my wedding. My brother knew how I'd react. He caught my eye from stage. Come with me and we'll be in a world of pure imagination. That's how music catches us, doesn't it? It holds us together then takes us somewhere so special in those sounds. And to see Sir Bryn back on that stage, with that charisma, that voice, his joy in being there with the choir, that chant that I wanted to, to show that I could perform and that I could sing and thank you, the Dunbar's Male Voice Choir, you gave it to me. Something to be cherished and, and something really, really important in the life of a, of a budding young singer.
and if you join that male voice, you'd be integrated within days, you know, into a community. Dunbar are incredibly proud of their Eisteddfod wins and, you know, their competing and all these different competitions. But there's something about that sense of singing together. It sounds really corny to say a family and a community, but it really, really is. You know, it really is.